To start the week on esports, let us look on how the esports industry looks like on a general level. Before we go into the industry overview, it should be said that esports industry has been studied academically quite little. However, there's a lot of business research available and esports bears resemblance to emerging industries. Naturally, esports has its own industry peculiarities and in this general section of the industry, we shall go through some of them. Most of what is covered is in accordance to what Tobias Schultz has written in his book on esports, and it is called Management in the World of Competitive Game. In the esports industry space, existing stakeholders can be categorized into primary stakeholders and secondary stakeholders. The primary stakeholders have been in the industry for a long time, whereas secondary stakeholders are newer and may have different industry backgrounds. These secondary stakeholders have introduced new ideas and concepts for the industry. Usually, they are not as well established in the industry as the primary ones. From esports value chain perspective, it can be said that primary stakeholders in the esports industry have direct impact and contribute directly to the value chain of the esports industry. Secondary stakeholders affect indirectly to this, va this value chain and <clears throat> can be seen as environmental or societal stakeholders. Secondary stakeholders influence the primary stakeholders and thus the value chain by investing in the space with money, opinions, or regulations. The industry has grown a lot during recent years. Still, the industry is not new, and a lot of stakeholders have been part of the industry from the early 2000s. Stakeholders are dependent on one another in many industries, and esports is no exception. In practice, this means that if there is no esports title, there would be no tournaments. Thus, there would be no professional teams or audience, which would lead to no money to be made. One could argue that the audience is one of the key stakeholders. Esports industry was created by the stakeholders who came from within the industry. At the beginning, there wasn't a lot of collaboration between other organizations and uh, the esports organizations. The esports organizations were mostly esports teams or clans trying to find sponsors or other supporters. However, at the time, it was hard to prove your worth for the sponsors in the form of reliable numbers or success. The hard to grasp characteristics evolved within the esports space are distinguished by Schultz and Stein in 2017 as follows The people involved within esports are highly focused on goal setting. The market's orientation is truly global. Esports are oriented towards change. Resources are allocated in a bottom up fashion. Participants are over energetic, over enthusiastic, and over dynamic. And that digitalization is integral to esports. First, let us look at the high focus on goal setting. The ultimate goal for esports teams and players is usually to be the best. The best team, the best player, and so on. Well-organized teams may also want to deliver the best possible experience for their fans and viewers. Constantly seeking new ideas and concepts for the sake of improvement is essential in and outside the game. It may be that the goal-setting mentality transfers from within the game into the outside. Innovations don't need to be radical, but can include, for example, minor process innovations as well. Uh, this can be, for example, executing new tactics. People in esports always aim to get better, and the mindset can change from being a top gamer to owning a top gaming team. Secondly, esports can be regarded as a virtual product, so global thinking in esports may come as a surprise. However, as the mindset of esports is global and games are followed globally, still events are locally organized, even though people attend from all over the world. Still, an offline arena needs to be set up somewhere, and the tournament needs a venue if spectators are wanted for arena attendance. Naturally, these games are also broadcasted online, where there are even more spectators from all over the world. 
Esports exists in two spaces, both real and virtual at the same time. This means that esports companies are positioned in both worlds, which seems to work. Change orientation means that when something doesn't work, change it. Within esports games, you need to constantly adjust to the situation at hand. The tenacity might come from within the games to keep changing until you succeed. A strategy of trial and error is commonly employed in esports companies. When you find something that works, exploit it to the fullest. Exploitation and exploration happen simultaneously. Resource allocation relates to esports still not having a central authority today, and most likely will not as the games are owned by the game developers. In the beginning stages, resources were scarce and no one to decide how to distribute them. There was a decentralized network that contributed their own resources for everyone's benefit. However, the game designers have a lot of power over their games. Still, they have decided quite often to listen to the community. Esports is not forced in any way, and if the game designer makes bad choices and don't listen to the players, they will lose them. What comes to being passionate about esports, it means that the esports media sphere is filled with actors driven by passion and dedication. This doesn't only mean the companies, but all the actors, including the customers. The dynamism of esports comes from the people involved. The esports, uh, the traits in esports seem to follow the way of proving themselves by being over-energetic, over-enthusiastic, and over-dynamic. Esports is born digital, and the growth of esports is linked with the growth of technology, uh, infrastructure, and more precisely, the internet. What is more peculiar is that the virtual teams, even the international ones, have existed in the esports space since the very beginning, which is early 2000s. Maybe even before that. This includes the key organizations. Teams, tournament operators, infrastructure providers, and communities. Virtual collaboration is common nowadays, but it wasn't in the early 2000s. All the above-mentioned characteristics make the esports media sphere what it is. People in esports companies are very committed not only to their employer, but to the industry as well. Improving organizational assets while being globally networked and connected at all times is very common. The clash between esports industry and traditional industries will influence the development of esports in the future. Everyone in the esports field generally wants the industry to do well, even though there are rivalries within the industry. 